Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 11 Advice from Anastasia Who gets stung by these? In every garden plot, there should be at least one colony of bees. I told Anastasia, there are very few people in our society who can communicate with bees. Special training is required and not everyone is successful. But she replied, a lot of what you do to maintain bee colonies just gets in the way. Over the past centuries, there have been only two people on earth who have come close to understanding this unique life form. And who might they be? They are two monks who have since been canonized. You can read about them in your books. They can be found in many monastery archives. Come on now, Anastasia. You read church literature too? Where, when? You don't even have a single book. I have at my disposal a much more complete method of retrieving information. What kind of method? Again, you're talking in circles. After all, you promised me you wouldn't resort to any mysticism or fantasy. I should tell you about it. I shall even try teaching it to you. You will not understand it right away, but it is simple and natural. Well, okay. So how should bees be kept on a garden plot? All you have to do is build the same kind of hive for them. They would have under natural condition. And that is it. After that, the only thing required is to go to the hive and gather part of the honey, wax, and other substance they produce that are, that are so useful for men. Anastasia, that's not simple at all. Who knows? what that natural hive should look like. Now, if you could tell me how to do it myself with the materials we have at our disposal, then that might be something feasible. <laughs> All right, she laughed. Then you will have to wait a bit. I need to visualize it. I have to see what people in today's world might have to, on hand, as you say, and where should it be placed so as not to spoil the view. I added. I should look into that too. She lay down on the grass, as she always did, visualizing her, or rather our living situation. But this time, I began to observe her carefully. As she lay on the grass, her arms were stretched out in different directions, with palms upturned, her fingers partly curled, and their tips, especially the tips of the four fingers on each hand, were also positioned so that their soft parts face upward. Her fingers first began to stir a little, but then stopped. Her eyes were closed. Her body was completely relaxed. Her face, too, appeared relaxed at first but then a faint shadow of some kind, a feeling of sensation move across, move across, across it. Later on, she explained how seeing at a distance could be practiced by anyone with a particular kind of upbringing. About the beehive, Anastasia had the following to say, you need to make the hive in the shape of a hollow block. You can either take a log with a hole in it and hollow it out to enlarge the cav cavity or use boards from a deciduous tree to make a long hollow box, 120 centimeters long. The board should be no less than six centimeters thick. In the inside measurements of the cavity, at least 40 by 40 centimeters. 
triangular stripe should be inserted into the corners where the inner surface meet to make the cavity somewhat rounded. The stripes can be just lightly glued in place and the bees themselves will firm them up afterward. One end should, one end should be fully covered with a board of the same thickness with a hinge panel at the other end. For this, the panel needs to be cut in such a way so that it fits neatly into the opening and sealed with grass or some kind of cloth covering the whole bottom. Make a slit or a series of slits to provide access for the bees. Along the bottom edge of one of the sides approximately one and a half centimeters wide, starting 30 centimeters from the hinge opening and continuing to the other end. This hive can be set on pilings anywhere in the garden plot, at least 20 to 25 centimeters off the ground with the slits facing south. It is even better, however, to set it up under the roof of the house. Then people will not interfere with the bees flying out and will not be bothered by them. In this case, the hive should be aligned horizontal at a 20 to 30 degree angle with the opening at the lower end. The hive could even be installed in the attic, provided there is proper ventilation or in the roof itself. Best of all, though, attach it to the south wall of the house, just under the cat, the eaves. The only thing is you need to make sure you have the proper, you have proper access to the hive so you can remove the honeycomb. Otherwise the hive should stand on a small platform with an overhead canopy to protect it from the sun and can be wrapped with insulation in winter. I remarked to Anastasia that this type of hive could be rather heavy and the platform and canopy might spoil the appearance of the house. What to do in that case? She looked at me a little surprised and then explained. The thing is that your beekeepers do not really go about it the right way. My grandfather told me about this. Beekeepers today have concocted a lot of different ways of constructing a hive, but all of them involve constant human intervention and its operation. They move the honeycomb frames around within the hive or move both the hive and the bees to a different spot for the winter. And that is something they should not do. Bees built their own, bees, bees built their honeycombs at a specific distance apart to facilitate both ventilation and defense against their enemies. And any human intervention breaks down the system. Instead of spending their time gathering honey and raising offspring, the bees are obliged to fix what has been broken. Under natural conditions, bees live in tree hollows and cope with any situation perfectly well on their own. I told you that they should be kept under conditions as close to their natural ones as possible. Their presence is extremely beneficial. They pollinate all the plants much more effectively than other agent, thereby increasing the yields. But you must know this pretty well already. What you may, what you may not know is that bees' mouths open up channels in the plants through which the plant takes in supplemental information reflected by the plants information the plants and subsequently human beings require. But bees sting people, don't you see? How can somebody get a good rest at a dacha if they're constantly afraid of being stung? Bees only sting when people act aggressively toward them, wave them off, become afraid or irritate, 
inside. Not necessarily at the bees, but just at anyone. The bees feel this and will not tolerate the rays of any dark feeling, any dark feelings. Besides, they may attack those parts of the body where there are channels connecting with some disease, internal organ, or where the protection aura has been torn and so forth. You know that bees are already effectively using. You know that bees are already effectively used in treating the disease you call radio cults. Tease. But that is far from being the only thing you can do. Only thing they can do. If I were to tell you about everything, especially showing the evidence you are asking for, you would have to spend not just three days, but many weeks with me. There is a lot written about bees in your will. All I have done is introduce a few correct correctives. But please, believe me, they are extremely important correctives. To establish a colony, colony of bees in a hive, like that is very easy. Before introducing a swarm of bees into the hive, put in a little chunk of wax and some honey plant. You do not need to put in any handmade frames or cells. Afterward, when there are colonies established and even a few neighboring dacha plots, the bees will multiply all by themselves. Then as they swarm, they will occupy the empty hives. And how should the honey be gathered? Open the panel, break off the hanging honeycomb, and extract the seal honey and pollen. Only do not be greedy. It is important to leave part of it for the bees for the winter. In fact, it is better not to collect any honey at all during the first year. <laughs>